social welfare as a means of, of, of providing what used to be provided by the local authorities once upon a time. I think that, that a, right, in the course of it, I think we need a representative of, of the various groups. Uh, one, one at least would not go around the houses for the rest of the year dealing with them because everybody has a unique story. We all deal with them every day of the week, so we should be familiar with them ourselves. And I think that at this stage, uh, 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 trying to invent a system that's going to resolve our housing problems through the private rental sector, it's not going to happen at the present time. It can't happen because there aren't sufficient uh, houses available in the country to meet the demand. Hence, uh, rents are going up. And incidentally, not all landlords uh, jack up the rents on, on a regular basis. Some landlords are very conscientious and, and look, out, look after their tenants uh, very, very well. Others are not so caring. And that's the group of people that we need to, uh, to, to zoom in on in the first instance. Deputy O'Dowd. Uh, just a query here regarding the Department of Social uh, Protection. I presume are you talking there about community welfare officers is this is the because rent supplement the, the rent supplement issue I, I, specifically I think this is I think this is crucially important because um, they know better than anybody what the supply and demand is in their area because they're dealing with it every day there, there are differences obviously based on geographic or city location as to the amounts that may be given and they they relate to obviously uh, you know rents in a city versus rents say in a, in a rural area uh, but one of the key things uh, that I feel could make a significant difference is looking again at the rent-a-room scheme. Now, the rent-a-room scheme is where people, usually I think it's just one individual, uh, um, has, a, has a room in their, it must be in their primary residence, they, they rent out their room and they have a tax-free income uh, for 12000 per annum for that rent. And secondly, the people who pay that rent can write that off against their tax liability. Now, there are issues around uh, if you are, you know, if a couple, for instance, can't do it because you have to be living on your own. There's issues around social welfare payments. If you're, if you're on a, a, a contributory old age pension versus a non-contributory old age pension, there are issues there. So what I'm really saying is this, that if you could expand the availability of room to rent, uh, in, 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 the sec in the sector generally, if we could look at the rules, how they might change. Uh, and I don't know who the expert on this is, uh, but pr I presume social, social welfare or social protection may have a view on that. But I, I, I think uh, the other point that comes in here, and I think it's very important, um, at the moment you can, uh, a, a family, I could bring in my nephew or my niece in and, and I, they could get rent allowance to come into my home. But my son or my daughter, uh, there's no payment for them. Now, so, so the question arises, is there, is there a case, is there a case to be looked at uh, where an existing family member could, in, if the, but the room must be there, the space must be there, so you're not talking about overcrowded uh, conditions, but where as an exceptional measure, as an exception measure only and for a limited period of time that we could look at, look at uh, that as an option, would it be possible uh, where, that you could actually have a member of your own family in that situation? Is that possible? Uh, and I think that's, that's certainly worth Deputy, looking. you're getting into the substance of it, and my, oh, my, my, my view yeah, is... You're, yeah, well, hold on a second, no, Chairman. But, I, I might very well be getting into the substance of it, but that's why I think it's important uh, that when you're getting somebody from social protection, that you get somebody who actually knows and who can talk about it. I, I appreciate that it may, be, uh, it, it may be detailed, but I think if you don't get that information, you'll be missing a, a potential uh, No, no I, I was trying to be helpful. Yeah. What I was going sure. to say was that when we have social protection at this, sec at this section, yeah. you'll be in a position to probe that. Well, I think, and, Chairman, you see, I, I, no, I no, I was going to... This just, needs just, to be looked at before they come. But, but, they need to have the answers. But yeah. two elements to it. Sure. Uh, they'll be advised the, of the issue. We can advise them yes, of the issue. Yes, yeah, that's fine. But the want. second yeah. part of it is we may discover, as you probe the issue, yeah. that another department or agency has an input into it as well, and we may need to add that in at a later course, stage. Yeah. It, it yeah. mightn't totally reside. That was the yeah. point I was trying to make. Sure. Well, you I, can, I, I, I think that if you make sure that your witnesses yeah. know exactly what we're going to ask, as best we can tell them beforehand, yeah. it makes a lot more no, sense. No, we, we will do it. My only proviso yeah. was it may, sure. be, it may go somewhere else. Uh, Deputy Ryan, yeah. De, uh, sorry, Deputy Wallace and then Deputy Ryan.
Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I would agree with bringing uh, Bob Jordan a threshold in, uh, but also uh, I think another person that needs to be brought in uh, is uh, the Acting Minister for Finance, Mike Noonan. Uh, I think, the f without a shadow of a doubt, uh, but the, U the main U.S. investment funds have had a huge impact on the rental sector, the private rental sector, and the favourable tax arrangements uh, that were arranged for them in the lifetime of the last government have had a big impact in this area, and I think it would be good if the minister was brought in. Anyone else on private rent? I'm just on that sector. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, this right. My apologies. Uh, in relation to the, the this element of it, rent control, uh, rent certainty, call it what you will, long-term rental uh, opportunities, I think we do need to bring someone in at this point uh, during this module in relation to giving us a view on international practice there, rather than taking that out and putting it into a separate section on legal issues. Okay. I think we need to have that, you know, in yeah, that, because that, that general debate. I think it's appropriate that we leave it there. Okay. Uh, rent control. Yeah. Uh, item four, private housing. Um, so, in terms of potential witnesses. De Deputy, uh, Deputy Canny first, and then. Uh, just that the uh, Society of Church Surveyors in Ireland be brought in. They represent both the uh, estate agents and they also represent the uh, professional practice in terms of quantity surveying and uh, cost management housing. And I think they would be a, a very worthwhile organisation to bring in. Uh, Deputy, I would agree. I would agree, I would agree Chairman. Would. Uh, and and uh, sorry. I, I think the, 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 the other uh, representative bodies, uh, the construction industry, we need to know what, 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 what their capabilities are and how they propose to go about it. Uh, CFI and representative of state agents and our mortgage brokers. I'm not so sure that I want to talk to mortgage brokers after some of the last number of years, but whatever. <coughs> Deputy Wallace. Um, I'd recommend that you bring in uh, Jim Kyogen from the Planning Department at Dublin City Council. Um, I think he has uh, a lot to offer in this area. Deputy O'Brien. Uh, and John O'Connor from the Housing Agency. I know we have the Housing Agency in, in, in other modules, but I think his expertise just in terms of housing and, and private housing, and that would be useful too. He's due in with the yeah. Yeah. housing Curlock, I'm and Thursday. Just a point of information, John O'Connor actually happens to be in this Thursday with the housing agency. He's coming in with them. Yes. Again. So, cool. by the way, de deputies, some of these people will overlap. So we exactly. will, like at the yeah, meetings, yeah. we'll have to allow some degree of latitude yeah. to broaden exactly. the questioning yeah. out. Um, so, Deputy Coppinger. Um, yeah, uh, I'd like a bit of clarity about what this session is meant to be about because I have a bit of an issue, which I've said already, about us having a whole session on private housing if... It's not, private housing is not affordable. That is their problem. Um, now, if that's what we're discussing, that's fine, but it's just a whole session on, because I think there are some people who want to just increase housing supply. And as I said at the outset, we can increase housing supply as we did during the Celtic Tiger when a lot of developers and speculators benefited, but people couldn't afford that housing. So I, I just would like clarity as to what the purpose of the private housing session is. Now, I think there are issues that need, need to be discussed, such as um, what has led to, uh, like we have millennials, as they're so-called now, people who are under 34, who the idea of owning a house is completely just off the agenda. And I think we need to have somebody in who would deal with that issue. Um, I don't think it should just be Tom Parlin or the Construction Industry Federation coming in. Or We need to look at what is happening in the private housing sector. Again, NAMA or somebody, the statements from the private housing sector seems to be that it's not profitable enough for them to build. That, you know, 20,000 on a house isn't enough, that they need, you know, much more. So could, maybe you could clarify what that the purpose of that come back, come back to you in that one more. Deputy Wallace. Uh, on the issue of private housing, um, I mean, I, I, um, I can tell you, I don't take the position of the CIF, uh, but I do think that there's massive problems with the supply of private housing in Ireland, and obviously affordability is number one. Uh, but two-thirds of the people of Ireland are probably always going to use private housing, mm -hmm. and I think it is a, a huge issue and very problematic and it's something that hasn't been addressed for years by any government that I know of 
and I think uh, it, obviously there's a limit to how much we can do but uh, it would be negligent of us to ignore the fact that there's huge problems with the delivery of private housing. Deputy O'Sullivan. Um, I know there is a section later on mortgage difficulties, but um, our, um, that's mainly we're looking at people in getting into arrears. But in this section, taking that there is a role for private housing, it's for people who to get, to get that mortgage in the first place. So is there a need for one of the banks or to be in there at that stage? I have considered this from the submissions mm -hmm. uh, to be the provision, the physical building of new, new houses. Um, rather than the, the, the mortgage side and whatever, that the, the mortgage and financing would be... Number 10. Uh, well, could, could be included with number 10, or, but, but that this was primarily, not exclusively, primarily okay. the provision of houses. Mm -hmm. That there is, as, as others have said, there's just no construction going on at the moment. Um, and Deputy Coppinger, yes, primarily the focus of this committee is social housing and affordable housing. Um, but we have to have a mix, and Deputy Wallace said two-thirds of people will live in, in private housing, so it's part of the big picture. You can't have, we can't look at one element w without, without the other. Um, but but our, our remit is quite, would be quite narrow on this. The problem, um, Mr Chairman, to my mind, with, with, with housing, <clears throat> and indeed our, our economy in general, is that the cost of housing to the average household is way above what would normally be expected. And as a result of that, too much of the family income has to go towards paying a mortgage or paying a rent. In, 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 in some areas now, the, the, the rents are, uh, are heading up towards 2,000 per month. And, uh, uh, that the, and some of them have gone beyond that already. In, in those circumstances, the question that immediately arises, how does a family uh, exist if they have to pay and set aside uh, 2,000 euro per month to pay their rent or their mortgage, whatever the case may be. So supply does have an effect, and the supply of the private sector has an effect, it is bound to have an effect. But where the problem arose in the past was, when, when, when speculation took in, got into the marketplace and, and properties were rolled over on numerous occasions, each time, very often, without ever a sod being turned, without ever a single sod being turned, and rolled over many, three, four, and five times to achieve an artificial and inflated value, which immediately was then passed on to the cost of the house. We cannot allow that to continue in the future because that kind of speculation has caused serious problems. And people may, 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 may be upset at that, 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 that somebody should say that, but it is a fact of life. There are no circumstances in which half of the family income should be devoted towards the paying the mortgage. It can't be done. It's not possible, and, and it will lead to tears many years in the future. So we need to recognise, we need to recognise that as we proceed into the future, both in the public and the private sector, to the extent to which the level of family income that goes towards meeting the mortgage or the rent is going to have a major impact on our society. Any, any other on this section? Just, De well, just, you, you answered my question, right? Um, you see, two-thirds of people rely on the private housing sector, as Deputy Wallace said, but I think that's the reason we have the problems that we have, because housing is something primarily for speculation and profit. But in terms of that session, we have to look at what are the factors that have led to houses being so expensive, and I do think this is where you would bring in somebody who has looked at um, you know, land ownership, uh, the speculation, we suggested in our submission there um, the likes of, obviously, Conor McCabe has written Sins of the Father, tracing the decisions that shaped the Irish economy. Uh, Rory Hearn could be there as well. Sinead Kelly from, Dr Sinead Kelly from the Department of Geography. But there has to be at least some perspective as to why this has happened. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I, I'm also conscious of mm. the time frame in which we're, we're operating. So... Um, I'm agreeing, but I think it would be impossible to invite everyone. Yeah, well, I will, uh, that's all I'm saying. One of those, I'm, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm agreeing with that. I'm agreeing with what you're trying to do, and we'll accommodate it, but not not everybody. Yes, Deputy O'Brien. Just to support Ruth, Conor McCabe, looking specifically at the issue of land and how it relates to that discussion, probably would be the most appropriate of, of the three. Would be my view. We, we will we will endeavour to do that. Uh, Nama, item number five. Um, NAMA should probably be a standalone session. Let's not do the debate on it now. I know you all have lots of questions. Thank you very much.
<laughs> From the debate, I just want to suggest a speaker. From NAMA. Well, I presume it's not just now. I presume if there are other people of interesting things to say. Well, I was wondering, that, that was the proposal I said, should we do a standalone? Like, there seems to have been a lot of discussion about NAMA. Mm. And, like, would that be a standalone yes. session? Yes. 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 But I, I want to suggest a speaker that would come in. I mean, you can't just have NAMA on their own in here. That's not what you're proposing, is it? Well, who... who that, that was... Well, OK, but there are other people who, who have expertise of NAMA and expertise of homelessness and might have interesting things to contribute. I mean, Mark Kenny, for example, from Azars, I think would be somebody worthy of considering to bring in alongside NAMA. Well, the only problem there is this, that I think we may have some questions to ask directly of NAMA ourselves as elected public representatives. And we may be able to come to a judgment as to what is realistic, what is achievable and attainable, and what NAMA's responsibility might be and how it might be extended uh, to, uh, to accommodate the kind of situation, uh, housing situation that we're faced with. I, I, I'm not certain that, uh, that, that, that at this stage that we should have a general debate on the whys and wherefores. I think we know, we know about NAMA. We've lived with NAMA now for the past seven or eight years, and uh, I'm sure that we, we, we all have acquired a certain amount of expertise, uh, and, and there are things that are possible and things that are not possible. But maybe I think we should concentrate on NAMA by itself for a start. Agreed. Okay. Sorry, Chair, are we all agreed that we're inviting the CEO and the Chair of NAMA? So well, that yeah, will be sure. Brendan yeah, McDonald, yeah, yeah. Frank yeah, Daly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. 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 I, I, do, I do think, I know what you're saying, but there is no harm in having somebody in who also has issues to raise about well, NAMA. I've there's so many questions for NAMA. Well, yeah. <laughs> and after that, if issues arise, there's always more issues. I, I, I think if we can manage the work... I, I, think so if you and Tally last week. I think if we can manage the work programme in a business-like way, that as we get through it, if we realise that we need, like I would hope that we would have, a, a, you know, a session or two to spare, that if we wanted to bring somebody back or somebody, something emerges during the process, that we can, we, we can add somebody, you know, that, that it, we, we work as efficiently as possible. Uh, item six is uh, homelessness. Um, we consider to be uh, appropriate in, in this particular module? Well, but if you just reflect for one moment on the, on the terms of, of reference of the committee, one of the key elements is to make recommendations. Um, and a lot of time, you know, how do people come into homelessness? Are there preventative steps, et cetera, et cetera? So they would seem to be some of the, you know, like we're, we're making, we're to make very specific recommendations and recommendations that might be helpful. So, you know, People who are dealing with homeless, homelessness, are there things that could be done that prevent or reduce the risk of becoming homeless? And that would be one. And secondly, then, uh, people who are homeless, and th this is where the agencies, you know, what, what additionally could and should be done to move those from that category of homelessness back into accommodation? And, it, like, it's quite a complex area, and people are homeless for a myriad of reasons, but they would be some of the, the broader issues. And there's, I, I take the points that some of... The previous speakers have made, there are quite a range of bodies and organisations dealing with homelessness and so forth. Um, so it's not going to be possible to invite in every individual uh, group. Um, but, it, it, but certainly homelessness is a key, one of the key elements of... of um, uh, Deputy uh, Function, please. Um, thanks, Chair. I think in relation to the homeless, we need to make sure that we are looking at it from a regional point of view. I know a number of people have said it's not just a Dublin issue, but it's re the, the homeless situation is very, very different if you're in a rural area. A lot of people can't even consider access and emergency accommodation because it's 15 to 20 minutes away from where their kids are going to school. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a very different issue. And I know we can't invite in every single agency, but I know... Um, let's say Carlo Kilkenny and in the South East where Deputy Butler is as well, their Focus Ireland do a huge amount of work. We don't really have, I mean, they have it in Dublin, you have kind of an overarching agency for homelessness. We don't really have that in the South East, but Focus Ireland sort of fill that role and I would like to see them being invited in to get that point of view because it is very, very different. Um, and you also have a situation where people sometimes have to stay in emergency accommodation and refuse um, an offer of a house because it is, they have no transport and it's, you know, 
30 minutes or so away from where their their kids are going to school and everything. We need to, to remember that. And I just, it, it, I do think there's a bit of a, a Dublin focus yeah, on it, no, unfortunately. We, and abs you know, absolutely, we take that yeah. element. The, the non-Dublin, the, the uh, regional side. Yeah. De and Deputy Butler. Deputy Coppinger. Um, I think this is a difficult one because I think we could all suggest a lot of groups. I mean, it could well be that we need more than one session on homelessness because we are a committee on housing and homelessness. Um, there was a bit of a debate the last day, uh, Chair, about inviting organisations versus inviting people directly affected. I think we have to probably do both. I think it would be really sent out a, a terrible message if this committee met and didn't actually have people who were experiencing this problem directly themselves. So I think we should agree that and not have a, a standing row about it. Let, let's but, just ask on that point, okay. just to clarify. In terms of, do the committee want, specifically want then individuals who are currently homeless? That's your suggestion to attend. Is that's of any great benefit at this stage. We, 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 we're all, we, we all, as public representatives, deal with, with, with people who are homeless uh, on a daily basis. So we, 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 we should at least be able to consider ourselves somewhat experts in, in, in that particular area. And, and, and putting people who are homeless through the question and answer session of how they became homeless and what we can do to stop it, we all know how we can stop it. We provide an alternative a housing accommodation. It's as simple as that. So how do we do it? How do we do it and how do we do it quickly? And I have already referred to, and I repeat it again, the reason we, we, where we are now is simply because we had too many bodies who had the responsibility for providing houses in the public sector, in the public sector. And, and, and as a result, we got nothing. And we, with the slowdown in the building, the construction sector in general, we're in a worse position. And there are a number of issues that cause people to become homeless. First of all, there are the people who, who, who are rough sleepers, who, who are traditionally in, in that particular category. Their situation is made worse by further people coming off the list who haven't been accommodated by the local authorities by, the, by, by virtue of the fact that the local authorities simply didn't have accommodation. And you then have the emergency situations where people are sent to hostels. On, on, I spoke with somebody at the weekend who travels 50 miles, 50 miles to see their kids. Uh, uh, having no place else to go except into a hostel. It's really it's, sad but, 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 and heartrending to go through this. So I don't think we should do that in a public okay, session. I take the point. I don't want to open the debate. Like, it's not a debate. I want to deal specifically just if you could stay with the issue, do you want individuals who, are, who have become homeless or do you want the agencies or both? And I just, I need a degree of clarity on that point first. Deputy, Deputy O'Brien then De Deputy Function. Yeah, and I say this as somebody who worked for a homeless service provider for three years. Most of the organisations who work uh, with folks in homelessness, whether they're more traditional homelessness or, or people who become homeless as a result of the financial crisis, they say it is really important that policymakers hear the experiences of those people who have found themselves in that position. Uh, clearly, some of those people can be very vulnerable. Some of them uh, have more resilience than those of us in this room. And in fact, the homeless service providers in Dublin have a network. It's an informal network which assists people who want to be able to share their experiences. So there is a real value in terms of our work of hearing people's experience. So, for example, yes, Bernard Wright, we all have... Uh, folks coming into our constituency offices, but that's no substitute to hearing somebody's direct experience of having to go into the council, how the council engages with them, whether they feel that that service is user-friendly or not user-friendly, etc. Uh, and I wouldn't just limit it to people who are in emergency accommodation. We are looking at a wide range of issues in the housing crisis. There is a value, whether in a standalone session or in this session, to bring in a number of people who can give that experience. So I'm strongly in favour of it. Okay. Deputy Function. Um, yeah, just very briefly, Chair. I think we should do both, have agencies and people. And I would agree, maybe we need to have a second session, like Deputy, Deputy Coppinger is saying. Deputy Wallace. Yeah, I would also agree. Um, I don't think we should be bringing people in here and questioning them, as, as Bernard suggested. But uh, I don't think it would do any of us any harm to actually listen to them. Uh, it, can, it can be in private session. Uh, somebody's phone. Um, sorry, but it was, it's off. Go on, Deputy. Um, it, it is um, people's direct experiences uh, can be very educational and. Uh, um, we've, 
I, I, I've, like, we've all read a lot about refugees, but uh, when I went to Cali the weekend before last and listened to people tell their stories, well, it actually does give you a different perspective sometimes. And I think bringing the few people in here that uh, have direct experience of it and it can be in private session, uh, I do think we'll learn from it. Deputy, 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 Deputy O'Dowd. Uh, I think it goes back to a point you made earlier about how social housing applicants are treated and indeed how homeless people are treated. I agree with Deputy Owen very strongly that we must, uh, we, must, we, we must articulate a process by which you know, that people are treated with respect right across the board and it is unfortunate that people who are homeless sometimes are not treated with respect that they're entitled to. And I would agree absolutely with that. Um, I think that there may be a way of doing it if we visit, uh, say, some of those hostels, if it's appropriate, if they would agree that we could visit where people who are homeless are living in, in hostels or hotels. Or, you sorry, I, I, well, I, I, I'm not going to split hairs with anybody here. I would like to be in a forum where I could meet people who are homeless, where they would be absolutely relaxed and able to talk to us about those issues. Whether that's a public forum or not, I don't know. Uh, but I would, li I, I would like to listen strongly to what they have to say. I think that uh, Deputy Wallace's point is very important, where he said if we were to meet him in committee, it would allow, them, it would allow people to express their views without, any, you know, without any, any of their personal details becoming public knowledge, if that was their wish. But I think it's very important that we visit or meet with people uh, and if we visit places, uh, I don't have a problem going to somewhere like Homeless Aid in Drogheda, uh, which is a, 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 a charity which looks after people who are homeless. I've been there before, I've met with people there, and they've expressed their views to me. And I think something like that in a forum, uh, you know, that we can understand and listen and hear what they're actually saying, what their needs are. Deputy Butler. I think it's very important that we do listen to the homeless people, but my point is I actually um, visited um, and spoke to homeless people yesterday just to get a, just some sort of semblance for this meeting today. But I actually think that if we were here in session with 14 TDs and, and the executive and to try and bring uh, maybe two or three homeless people into the applicants of Leinster House and to sit them over there and I just think that maybe if two or three of us met them in a, in, a, in a smaller surroundings, I, I just feel, I don't know whether it would be fair or appropriate to bring them into this type of a, a setting. Um, so I, what I would suggest is that I have no problem speaking to homeless people. We're all speaking to them every day of the week. But I think maybe, uh, maybe, maybe three members um, would, speak, would speak to them. I think it could be very, very daunting for someone to have to come in here and, and, and tell their story. Deputy Ryan. Uh, thanks, Chair. Look, you know, on this, on this heading, on... Um, uh, homelessness. We need to get at the key drivers of homelessness. We need to split it between rough sleepers and the other homelessness issue around lack of supply. We want to come up with preventive measures. I don't think it's necessary to invite people in to, you know, to get at the heart of this. I think the representative bodies can do it. But if members feel, if, if some members feel, and if there's a general view that we should hear, hear the, you know, the, the, the people themselves, I certainly think it should be in private. Uh, Deputy F Function. Um, I think it's important, Chair, to make the point that it would be up to people. They would have the choice. I think there's a lot of people that would, would welcome the, ch the chance to come in here. I mean, Erica Fleming was in here a, number, a few weeks ago and met with a number of TDs. I think people, it would be up to them whether they wanted to come in or not. And I think there is a lot of people that would want to come in, and I don't think we should uh, we should rule that out. Unfortunately, I hope that, that, that uh, we wouldn't be seen as, as, as it were, using the people who are homeless in the context of, of attempting to resolve a problem. They, they are abused already. And one of the things I think we should do is one of the contributory factors is where lending institutions repossess uh, homes. I think, you know, we, we, need, to, to, uh, we, we need to have uh, an exchange of views with the lending institutions or a representative of the lending institutions because it is something that we all meet on a daily basis and there are court cases on, 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 a, on a regular basis. And while I would be one of the people who would strongly uh, 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 um, suggest and support people who are in that position, uh, it, there are two, there, there, there are two uh, issues there. One is the area where the person, the, 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 the borrower, is intent on doing their best to meet their payments insofar as they can. I think we have to respect that and we have to support that and we have to acknowledge that. And when people become homeless as a result of 
the lending institution foreclosing on them, then I think we have to be sympathetic towards them. And we all have dealt with those cases over the last number of years. It's not a thing that happened today or yesterday. It's been going on for quite a number of years. I know one or two others, and I don't want to prolong it, but I, I just want to put this... Then, uh, I request I I, put it there. From those who have contributed already, and I know one or two of you want to contribute a second time, there seems to be uh, more people in favour of wanting to meet individuals as well as the organisations. Okay? There also seem to be uh, a view that it should be done in private session, whether here or somewhere else, um, that whatever. If, I I'm, I'm just, we, we can discuss, the, the, but certainly that seemed to be... I don't want to return to the discussion, I just want to make a slightly different yes. proposal to try and move it forward. I would like to make a proposal as well. Just, I was just going to say, because there is a division of opinion, and it's the first division of opinion that we've had. There is, as I was saying before, it's, I think it's called a service users forum, uh, which Focus Ireland and a number of the other NGOs coordinate. Maybe a helpful suggestion would be if the chair was to contact the, the person who coordinates that, she's a staff member of Focus Ireland, have a chat to see what's the best way to proceed with this, and then for the chair to come back having had that conversation, because I actually think when you have that conversation uh, with those people, you re realise that some of the concerns that are expressed here won't be shared by the professionals in the field, and they would be much more open to the idea of, of some kind of presentation. But I would propose that as a way forward. Deputy Coppinger, before we conclude yeah, this, I, I yeah. just I, I think we should have both. I think we should have representatives, and I think we should have people experiencing it. But also, I want to make a point about the private session. I think the way people are speaking about homeless people, it's in danger of being incredibly patronising. Homeless people aren't a species apart that are that like sensitive and vulnerable. Anyone who would be invited in to speak would know that they were speaking to people on the Housing and Homeless Committee. You know, they're intelligent people. They can make that decision for themselves. I just would be very wary of the type of message being sent out. We're meeting homeless people in private, you know. Anyone who's invited would know they're being invited. And there's a lot of homeless people who've made that decision to speak out, right? And that's what I'm talking about. But the reason I think it's important, people are saying they're dealing with homeless people. Some people are. Some people are not as much, but I can tell you that there are particular problems that we should be dealing with. For example, the travelling from school to emergency accommodation at huge cost to that person. We should be proposing something on that. Um, there's also the issue of non-Irish homelessness, which hasn't been featured, but is massive in my constituency. It's disproportionate, actually. There's Muslims there's Africans, there's all sorts of different cultural issues. So all I'm saying is I do think that it's sending out the wrong message that we meet in private with homeless people. Can we I, invite can, people in. Can, can, I make, then, can I follow up on Deputy O'Brien's proposal that I would make contact with the user group and bring back their suggestion or proposal or thoughts? Or thoughts? And, and if people know homeless families that want to speak at the committee, we can suggest them. That, uh, uh, Deputy? Actually, item number nine. We haven't got to it. Yeah, yeah but oh, sorry. That, that, no, that's social inclusion. So I presume nine is dealt with now as well, rather than repeating no. that. No, no, nine is is not dealt with yet. Yeah, okay. Okay. So. Deputy O'Brien. Just, just to come in on the substantive issue of the homelessness section, just because I just want to make a couple of very quick suggestions. I know I said at the start, uh, Owen O'Sullivan from Trinity and Cahill Morgan from the Homeless Agency are, are two people we absolutely should have in. Just to repeat the point, there is a genuine difficulty in inviting individual homeless service providers in areas where there's already networks. So, for example, in Dublin, there are over 40 homeless service providers outside the statutory organisations. They have a forum. Alice Leahy and, and her organisation are on that forum, as are others. I do think where there is a forum like that, we should maybe consider approaching the forum rather than individual groups. However, I know the situation in, in Limerick and Cork may be slightly different, so I just think you know, where there is a structure that represents the voluntary sector, we should invite in that structure. Where there isn't, we should invite in individuals that people recommend. Okay, that's item six, homelessness. Um, item number seven, uh, legal issues, and this can be uh, quite broad because um, whether it's in terms of uh, CPOs and so forth and maybe some of the, the broader aspects that were mentioned earlier. So um, we're open for suggestions on this. Deputy Coppinger. Uh, well, just on this, I think it is an important one. I think the first legal issue will be rent controls and the legalities of that. Have you somebody in mind for that? Yeah. Um, well, can I just go through the three and then I'll suggest speakers? 
Um, the, the three areas, security of tenure, I think, is the, the legal issues around that, ending the issue of sale of properties, the grounds for eviction and other things. And then the third one would be compulsory purchase orders of privately owned property or land as an issue that's come up in relation to vulture fund distressed vacant properties. So three groups that I are that I was thinking of is Edmund Honahan, who's spoken recently on the CPOs, for example, or somebody like him, but the master of the High Court. Uh, Barra Lysett, who's a barrister and legal officer of Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission. He is formerly a legal officer with Threshold, so he might be a good person on rent controls and security of tenure legal issues. And then the third group, I think, is um, the Tyrrellstown tenants could be invited there who are currently in that situation of asking their, for their homes to be acquired because it's under threat from a vulture fund. Any other proposals on this area? Deputy O'Brien. Yeah, I think we should broaden this out to housing policy and law just because I think it fits and you get some, some good overlap. Uh, Michelle Norris, um, she's with the Housing Finance Agency, but again, she's one of the country's leading uh, uh, policy experts and has a good read of best practice in other parts of the world. I think she would contribute well. Um, uh, Fianza is a network of European housing and homeless charities. Uh, and they have a fiance Ireland and they have a person here, they could give you that broader experience, I think, both the legal and the policy. Simon Brook, he's a visiting professor of Trinity College Dublin. Now, he does work for Cluid, but I'm suggesting we invite him in, actually, with his TCD hat on. Again, he has huge experience of housing and homelessness in Britain and Ireland, uh, and again, legal and policy. So I would suggest those and, and agree with Ruth's suggestions. Deputy Jarkin. I am from the Law Society, uh, representative of the Law Society. Yeah, can I, maybe at this point, um, I, I, I don't want to harp back, but during the, the debate, certainly I mentioned it and others mentioned the whole issue of uh, the constitution and uh, the, the right to housing. I'm, I'm, it has been mentioned and it has been referred to in both directly and indirectly, and perhaps the Law Society or somebody like that might have a view on it. Uh, I think that would be worth probing at this stage as well. Um, Everybody happy at that stage? Do, do, if they can't do, do that, um, there's a chap, I think he's a professor of, of housing law in Galway University, McKenna, I think is his surname, and he might be another person to add to that if you can't. Porig McKenna, I think is his name, from Galway University. Um, mortgage difficulties. Chairman, uh, that's the area that I was referring to earlier. It nearly comes in under the homelessness You're thing as your well. You're getting your turn now, Ted. It nearly comes into the, the area as well. Uh, the, the, the insolvency bodies, um, I'm not so sure about that. I think FLAC is definitely one that, that, we, should, that, that we should meet. And, uh, and representatives of, of those experiencing mortgage, mortgage difficulties. Now, there are two categories of people there. One are, are the group of people who feel that... that um, uh, they, were, they were busy during the uh, recent election uh, uh, in, in my constituency uh, uh, with putting stickers on posters and that kind of thing. The, the um, uh, Land League, I think, the, the New Land League, I think they call themselves. And uh, I want to emphasise that, that I, don't, uh, I don't hold any brief for people who don't wish to pay at all. And I don't think that it is in our interest to hold a brief for people who don't wish to pay at all. It is in our interest and the interest of our society to ensure that we give careful consideration to those and support to those who are attempting to do their best and meet their payments to the very best of their ability, very often at great sacrifices to themselves and, and, and their families. And we most certainly do need to support them. And, 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 and the, the, the bodies that, 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 need to be, that we need to discuss that with are obviously uh, the lenders. And I think the time has come in order that we, that we should have at least one slot where we can deal with them directly. And by all means, if somebody wants to come in and, and make their case, and I, I have no difficulty with that privately. I would prefer it privately. I, 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 you know, we all do our, our respective uh, constituency work privately. And can, people don't really want to have their private affairs aired in public if they can avoid it at all. So we must respect their privacy. So I would, I would certainly say that the, the lending agencies uh, need to be, to be brought in, and particularly those who are on the central bank, and the central bank 
in, on that issue because third parties, un, unregulated third parties, are in control of quite an amount of mortgages throughout the country at the present time. And uh, I believe it, it behoves us to, to, to try to ensure, insofar as we can, that the rules of the central bank in relation to lending and repossession and, and, and rights to, to, to houses and mortgages are observed by the unregulated third parties and that the uh, unregulated third parties be regulated and that the acquisition, this relates to some of the things that have been said already by Deputy Coppinger and, and others, uh, that's, that's it. I believe that there's an obligation on us to ensure that unregulated, quote unquote, third parties recognize the need to treat the people with whom they are dealing with respect and honesty and fairly and fairness. Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan. Going back to the original, one of my points earlier about the difficulties yes. for people getting a mortgage. So we do need the banks to come in here on that okay. and equally the credit union because they're anxious. Can I, can I just probe that with you yeah. a moment? And it's to follow on from something mm -hmm. that Deputy O'Brien said in relation to are we looking for individual banks or the Banking Federation? Like, are well, we... I'm just, well. Yeah. Well, again, if we're going through the various over bodies, that, then that, that's fine if, if we want to do it through the, 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 the Federation. Um, the Credit Union also, yes. because of their role. And MAPS. Yeah. yeah. MAPS. Yeah. Uh, Deputy O'Brien. Yeah, and again... I'm not suggesting, because I agree with the other speakers, that we invite all of these, but if some can't come, these can fill some of the other positions. David Hall from the Irish Mortgage Holders Association. Uh, she certainly would be Actually, yeah. close to the top of my list uh, in terms of this section. Claire Feeney runs the um, uh, mortgage to rent section uh, uh, inside the housing uh, agency, but she's specifically tasked with that. Uh, and I think if she was in a position to come in, she'd have very interesting things to say to us. Uh, there is an argument to say that... Um, the local authorities, again, inside some of the local authorities, they have specific individuals who are dealing with what role the local authority can play when somebody's in mortgage distress in terms of can they assist in purchasing the home or... So I think there will be some interesting things. I also have to say this is one, on, and I agreed with Mick when he was talking about the Minister for Finance at the earlier section. I'd also like to hear the Minister for Finance in this because particularly as portfolios of... of um, uh, mortgages are being sold down to uh, unregulated funds. That's a huge cause of, and we're seeing this in Tyrrellstown, some of these difficulties. So I'd like to either see a departmental official or the minister come in to deal with that as well. One final name, uh, Carl Dieter is somebody who I think has interesting things to say. I don't always agree with him, but he might be uh, somebody we could consider as well. Uh, Deputy Wallace. Yeah, uh, I would agree with Owen on that as well. I mean, um, there's no doubt about it, but um, a lot of... Uh, what Ben Bernard classified as the unregulated third parties, um, they they do seem to have the power to run amok at the moment, and uh, I think maybe uh, the acting minister of finance, Michael Noonan, is probably the best uh, government individual to be addressing on that, um, because I mean, uh, we obviously have to look at uh, can we stop them from running amok? Do we have any control over them as to how they treat Irish people? Uh, who are in mortgage distress. Uh, so that needs to be addressed. And uh, in terms of other personnel to invite in, uh, I just mentioned Ross McGuire. Anyone else on this? Deputy, uh, sorry, Deputy Coppinger and then... Yeah, I think um, this is an important session in that it's not that people who get into mortgage arrears automatically become homeless, for example, but it's very linked with the whole issue. I think we should look at inviting in some of the receivers um, who are doing the repossessions of homes that are leading then to homelessness. I agree with the issue of the REITs and the vulture funds that have now acquired mortgage, big books of mortgages um, in the market. So we should invite in representatives like Mars Capital and others um, because that is actually leading now to the sell-off of these um, homes and directly to homelessness. And I'd agree with the Minister for Finance. I think the whole issue of mortgages policy is emanating from the Department of Finance and uh, they should come in. Deputy Function. Yeah, yeah, I think um, there's a lot of groups that provide support for people in mortgage distress that are not, I know, like free legal aid, but, but sometimes the wait is so long for that that um, other groups like the hub 
I don't know if they have national remit. I know they're certainly very active in the southeast area. I think we should possibly look at inviting them in as well because they support people who cannot afford um, the cost of like legal fees. I think they'd be a good group to have in. I think uh, when you mentioned the credit unions, I think CUDA, who are part of the credit union, should also be brought in. I, I just make the point on this particular section, it has been a very extensive list, um, so we'll, we'll have to see what uh, is, is manageable. And I take it from, from the, the opening comments that uh, either the Minister or the Department of Finance need to be at the front end of this session. Um, but, and we'll, we'll, go to, we'll go through the, the list. We'll be circulating it anyway later. But it just dawned on me as you were speaking, there were, it was an awful lot of names. Um, so. I think we should get a balance for it because I would agree with uh, Ruth. I think we definitely need representatives from, from the vulture funds. I think we need somebody from each section where people are affected. You know, not, not, not the same representatives representing the same section of, of the difficulties people are in. So I definitely think we need somebody from the vulture fund end of it because that's a huge issue at the minute. In the individual agencies. I, I think, Mr. Chairman, we don't need a commentary on what's gone wrong. No. We know that. So we, what we do need to do is to engage with those who are making it wrong. There's a big assumption everyone knows what's gone wrong. Well, I, I, I have to, with okay. no disrespect it's at all. It's a public body. Nah, wait a second now. Hold on a second now. <laughs> but, uh, no disrespect at all. Some of us have been learning this for many, many long years. And those of us who learned it lately, uh, you know, we, we all have done our bit at the coalface. Uh, and it's, this didn't come, we didn't come lately to the table. So I want to clearly point out that this is not a new situation for most of us. And if it is a new situation for most of us, over the last five years, people have been in, in this country reading the newspapers, watching the television, and listening to what people have to say over the last seven, eight years. Then we know what the problems are. And we have acquired quite a, a considerable knowledge of it. And I would strongly suggest that we bring the individual uh, lending agencies. There are only three of them or so three major lending agencies who have a direct input in what we're talking about. And we can ask them questions. And incidentally, the Housing Finance Agency is another agency that have some, uh, we used to have quite an amount of influence on the whole area of local authority housing, local authority loans, and for example, there used to be a time when people could get local authority loans relatively easily, provided they were in a certain income area. And, you know, we need, we need to hear from, from, from that particular part of, of the market as well. If we don't do that, and we just merely comment on how awful the situation is, we can wring our hands and tear our hair. But we'll be doing that in six months' time and in two years' time. So the time has come to my mind now to deal directly with the issues and engage with those who are at the coalface. Let's hear from them. Thank you. Okay, okay next section is issues relating uh, to social inclusion. Deputy O'Brien. Yeah, I mean, the idea of this was actually this would be the session where we bring in people who are directly experiencing different aspects of the, the crisis. So, obviously, we've dealt with the, the homeless bit of it, but I want to come on. Okay, yeah, I think, I think this piece, and I, I think, just want to agree because I know where you're going with this, we need to be careful that people are groups that we may have omitted you know, at earlier sections, there's an opportunity to do. And some of them might have very specialist areas, and, you know, that this is an opportunity to think a little bit outside the box. Uh, it might be a little bit more than just direct homelessness. So this is an opportunity to fill that space and to, to address those issues specifically. Sorry, Deputy O'Brien. No, no. So in that spirit, obviously, I'll, I'll leave the homeless section to one side because we've dealt with that for the moment. But there's a number of groups that I think should be at this. I agree with Ruth. I think residents such as, for example, the Tyrrellstown residents, I would suggest here, although I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a row about it, but I think they need to be somewhere in the programme. There's the particular issue of very large number of families who were in the asylum system, who've been granted status, uh, but who are now trapped in direct provision because they can't get accommodation, either private rental or council. Uh, in in Clondalkin, there's about 40 such families, and statewide picture is much bigger so I think they need to be involved and there are organizations that are working with those families that would be happy to provide a, a speaker and I'll pass the name on to the committee clerk afterwards there's a specific problem of traveler homelessness uh, both in terms of the causes of it but then the additional barriers that uh, travelers particularly single travelers have to accessing housing and again the travelers organizations at a statewide level would be the first port of call so in addition to homelessness both the more traditional type of homelessness and the financial crash related homelessness I think families facing eviction, 
uh, folks trapped in direct provision when they shouldn't be there, uh, and travellers should be included in this section. Deputy Coppinger. Uh, rather than the term social inclusion, I mean, that's a term I, I detest, um, but for, I think the purpose of this session, I would have thought, was groups with special housing needs, because this is the housing committee. So the travelling traveller specific accommodation for example is an area of special housing need um, <coughs> I think Pavy Point or one of the traveller groups should come in absolutely uh, I agree migrant rights centre for example or some migrant group um, in relation to uh, the whole issue of refugees and direct provision um, I prefer if the Tyrrell Sound residents weren't put in that category of kind of I think it's more of a financial issue rather than, than that um, yeah, so I think those groups will be the, the key ones. Deputy O'Sullivan. Yeah. Um, as we're talking about special housing needs, I just meant to mention two other groups. One are prisoners leaving prison who are facing into homelessness. And I know there's an overlap with the homelessness, but there are a couple of groups who do work directly with prison, former prisoners. And the other one then are those in recovery from addiction. Um, and again, um, the difficulties, and it is because of the lack of housing stock, but for those in recovery being in hostel accommodation where there is a lot of active drug activity and alcohol activity going on. So I do think there, that's another area of very particular special needs, and if we get it right, we can prevent the revolving door. Uh, Deputy Ryan. Uh, yes, just in relation to this topic, I agree with Deputy Coppinger. I think social inclusion is probably the wrong heading for it. I think uh, special, uh, special housing, housing needs... Uh, would be more appropriate. Uh, I think the, we need to deal with the traveller issue. We need to do, deal with the uh, people, as Mar Deputy O'Sullivan said, in relation to drugs, addiction, etc. But also uh, uh, a category there of people with disability, uh, special, you know, and uh, who are a long time on the list, and because local authorities can't provide them or haven't got modified houses, it's a specific category we need to deal with. Okay. Is there a problem, actually? Yeah. Sorry, Deputy. Agreed. We're not. Agreed. 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 Excuse me. Excuse me. The last time I looked, I was chairing Deputy. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, to Deputy Ryan, in, is there a representative organisation that, that you had in mind? No, in terms of disability. Age action. In terms of disability. Living would be good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And Sorry, that is an important one, Chair. To interrupt the elderly and the whole issue of. You know what happens when later in life you may have the whole issue of downsizing and special accommodation for the elderly. Deputy O'Sullivan raised an issue which uh, brought something to mind and I, if, I, I suppose I haven't contributed to the meeting but I, I just want to make this specific point. You talked about um, those recovering from drug addiction and whatever. A number of years ago I came across most of the residential rehabilitation, an awful lot of that is done by the voluntary sector and it's not particularly well funded. But a number of years ago I came across one of the, and I won't name them here because we're in public session, one uh, residential centre who was making a proposal at the time that people who were going in to residential care for extended periods and had an entitlement to a housing support but weren't able to claim it, that that support should follow them in. And that particular group had a very practical proposal that maybe this committee should look at. And it was, I'll give the name to the Secretariat afterwards, um, because, but, but it was a very specific, to, it would apply, by the way, not to, the, to just them, it would apply to all res, but the, the, down, the benefit would be that people would be in treatment for longer and the progression would be more successful. I'll give the details. That includes, concludes the social inclusion. And finally then, uh, housing finance. Deputy Wallace, you have a few ideas of this. <laughs> um, well, of the people that I would like to ask in, uh, again, um, uh, I'd like to see Michael Noonan coming in again, um, probably Paul Sweeney from Task. Um, I think we have a huge challenge um, about just how we're going to fund uh, a really good social housing programme in Ireland. And uh, I, I don't believe that we should be going down the PPP route where money costs 15 times more than what we can borrow in the markets. Uh, and uh, I think, given that this is an emergency, um, we are going to have to address the point that 
uh, we would probably, if we were to get about 10 billion euros for infrastructure investment in the housing area, we're probably going to need a break from the Europe from Europe uh, on the fiscal rule uh, because being able to borrow money at 0.7% is uh, is great value and uh, has a huge knock-on effects for the whole economy and society and employment and the whole lot. Um, but paying 15 times more more for it uh, through a PPP uh, is not attractive. And uh, if Europe means anything and uh, it uh, obviously leaves a lot to be desired as far as some are concerned, uh, but uh, at, at this stage, uh, I think it's absolutely imperative that the Irish state is allowed to break that fiscal rule and borrow money off the markets at less than 1%. Well, let's not get into the detail, your, but your yeah, specific well, recommendations of who you want. I'm Michael to come in here, and uh, I find Paul Sweeney uh, has done some good work in this area, and I think we it was good okay. to listen to him. Deputy O'Brien, you had somebody in mind. Yeah, just a couple of suggestions. The CEO of the Housing Finance Agency is an obvious one for this section. The Irish League of Credit Unions, um, their chief executive again on the back of some of their recent uh, proposals. I don't have a name, but I'm trying to, trying to identify one, and it follows on from, from Mick's point. Somebody who has some expertise in arm's length and off balance sheet mechanisms that may be an option for the state to use to increase borrowing capacity. I just think that would be certainly worth looking at, and I'll maybe come back with a name if we find one. Deputy Coppinger. Yeah, uh, I, I'd agree with a lot of those suggestions. I, I think the whole issue of are we in a position to fund a social housing programme under the current EU fiscal rules, like there isn't clarity about that. And I think somebody from the Department of Finance who... That was Deputy, what yeah. was his first point in terms of the Department or the Minister in particular? Yeah, that, we we that definitely need somebody who specialises in that. Um, but uh, also, there are, you know, academics that could be suggested there. Again, not to have too many of them, um, but uh, Dr. Mick Byrne from Maynooth University or Sinead Kelly from Maynooth University in the Department of Geography. But I would agree that the Department of the Environment and the Department of Finance will be critical here as well. Uh, I'll come back to you, uh, Deputy Canny. <coughs> League of Credit Unions, I think CUDA should also be included yes, in that. Sorry, and I think that's very important. Because we have, have a, a, a somebody, of somebody said it. And I suppose the other area, you know, I was reading with interest uh, last week, I think, in one of the Sunday papers about uh, a company that's actually on the stock exchange ra raising money in, in London as a house builder here in Ireland and basically they own at this stage 20% of the land for development around Dublin and this is a problem where people are buying it up and they're going to f hold it until the market comes right to do it which is going to add to our problem and I think that's something that we need to look at in, in real terms because we're going to have these kind of companies who will hoard the land they can afford to do that and look at it maybe as a five or ten year uh, programme for them to make their, their, their profit back. And at the same time, we kind of build, and I'm thinking about the likes of Bernard, where he is, you know, on the greater Dublin area, that the land is being bought up, it's being held, so there has to be penalties, use it or lose it, and that has to be brought in as well. So I think that's something for the Department an of element, An element of that, Deputy Kenny, in a, in a, I suppose to be helpful, we should be looking at when we're doing the legal section. We have a whole, uh, so we should be doing it at that point as well. Uh, and that goes to, and if you, that goes to one of the key issues around the possible uh, right to housing as a constitutional issue, and that would give strength to that type of p possible legislation. Deputy Durkin, and then Deputy yeah, I would Thomas. agree. I would, I would, I would strongly agree with Deputy Kenny there in, 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 in that area. I think, as well as that, <clears throat> I think I agree with the Minister of Finance and, and the Minister for Public Expenditure. Yes, they, they, have, they have a role to play there, and they certainly have a, have a, a, a comment to make. And you know, we have, we have, we have each of us individually have approached them many, many times in the last number of years and put some uh, various proposals forward. Uh, that haven't yet uh, uh, been favoured. However, there, there, there's, al there's always the first time. The situation we find ourselves in in relation to housing now requires fairly dramatic and, and, and drastic uh, response. So uh, I believe the, 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 there are a number of agencies as well uh, involved in the lending business. Uh, uh, Trinity Bank, I think, was one of the, one of the groups that, that, that we met, um, I met some time ago. They had proposals to, to provide funding in, uh, off balance sheet. The difficulty is that most of these agencies borrow money at 3 or 4 percent. 
uh, whereas uh, the government can borrow money at 1% or less than 1%, uh, as the case may be. So, obviously, we should try to position ourselves in a way to, to get the benefit of the cheapest money that is available. That's in the national interest and the interest of the economy in general and everybody in the country as well. And, and how to do that uh, is, is to talk to the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Public Expenditure and see how, if, if for instance, if for instance, as I've said,